welcome back entrepreneurs, creators, friends, family, colleagues. What other titles do we have? Welcome back to the Friday Lives. Helpcast, we'll call it that. We're going into the live stream today, whether you're watching this live on the replay. Chances are you might be seeing this on the replay. Thanks for being here. Today, we're going to be diving into some mistakes that creators make. Three key ones that I've outlined over working and building a team, hiring a video editor and hiring a virtual assistant. I've actually started hiring a virtual assistant way back when I was still working full time at my job long before I quit to go full time into my business and my brand. So no matter where you're starting from, chances are if you're new to all of this, there's some mistakes that you're bound to make, but it is a okay. We're going to be walking you through that. We're going to be going through the content just to give you a quick overview of what's going to happen today. Go through the three tips, Q and a session afterwards. If you have questions, even afterwards on the replay, put it down in the comments down below. I'm very active in my, uh, or my channel and in the comment section. Great. And if you're here live, welcome to the party. I almost started to trick people today in saying that we're going to do the wheel of wonder game, but we will be shortly. We'll say that, put an asterisk next to it shortly. So I want to dive into some of the three mistakes that creators make when you're just getting started into trying to build a team. There's mistakes that you can make when it comes to the pre-hiring phase. There's mistakes and things to look for when you're looking at applications, kind of sorting through who should you hire, who should you not, who qualifies for what you're looking for and not like they just look good on paper. Cause give any of us typing wizards <laughs> a resume or something you can make, you know, working at a fast food chain sound like you ran a five-star restaurant. Okay. <laughs> so we want to not discredit the work that people have already done, but make sure that what we're looking for is in alignment with the work that we need to actually get done. Uh, and there are some mistakes that after you're working with somebody, you hire them, you think that person is going to be a good fit. The key thing for me is making sure within the first 30 days, is this person a good fit for the business and for uh, the brand? Say hello to the fam. Carlos, good to see you. Glad that you are here. Todd Christmas Clatter, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Uh, says Facebook user, if you're on Facebook, we're multi-streaming. We're testing this with Ecamm, um, powered by Ecamm. If you're not using it, go to dinah.link forward slash Ecamm. I don't know why you wouldn't be using it, but if you're watching this on Facebook or, or another platform on LinkedIn, Twitter today, uh, make sure you click on the, should be in the description or should be somewhere in the chat area so that your name can populate. So, but thank you, Facebook user 293, niece at 337-658, you know, prison number going on. What's up, airport atheist? Good to see you saying yo, good to see you, glad that you're here. Alrighty, so let's get into this. Let's not delay things. The mistake number one, hiring the cheapest person. For sure, without a shadow of a doubt, everybody has a price and it makes sense when you're going through the process of hiring somebody, you're looking at what you need. How much time is that person uh, going to be committing every week? Do you need somebody that's on part-time or full-time or I like to call this like flex time where maybe it's only like 10 or 12 hours per week. But when you look at it overall for the month, it's super helpful to what you're doing, especially if you can refocus on some other stuff. But even though budget is like a factor, it's a point, like it, it is important. It shouldn't be the main thing, right? And to be honest, if we're all being very honest here, we all spend and waste money in different areas. For some people, like if you're a fan of the channel, fan of the content, you know, we talk about cameras, tech, all the things to help you simplify the video creation process. But in the midst of watching these videos on YouTube, you're like, well, I need that microphone. That sounds great. That looks great. You start looking sideways at your own stuff. You start buying things. You know, you could be in the knitting space and be like, I need that fabric. I need that pattern. No, I need the new sewing needle 3000. Like we all have things in addition to like fast food like a $10 trash sandwich at McDonald's will not fill you up, but it's going to be at least 10 or $20. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're done spending the money. However, when it comes to building your brand, we can't go at price first. Price cannot be the priority. The priority needs to be what you need help with the most, not the price. Price is a factor, 
but let's not it let, let let's not let that be the only factor when you're hiring. The priority when you're hiring somebody should be are they qualified to do what I actually need them to do? It's no different than when you're buying gear and when you buy too cheaply, you buy the problems that come with being cheap. And when you look at it, you pay for it either way. If you hire somebody that's underqualified for what you actually need them to do, you're going to pay for them to mess over it the first time and then say, okay, I'm done. And then you say, no, I don't even know if you touched this. Did you change anything? Did you do any work to it? Matter of fact, it looks the same with a few t changes and tweaks. This is not edited or this document isn't correct or that web page isn't supposed to look like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like, okay, I'll go fix it. They go back, spend more hours working on it. And they say, okay, I'm done now. And you say, yeah, no, this ain't, <laughs> this ain't gonna work. This is not where it's at. And so now you're mad because you're paying for somebody to make mistakes when you know good and daggone well, you could have did it better yourself. I already know you control freaks out there. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. That was my problem. Okay. I'm, I'm grateful. I'll tell you what, straight up front. I am super grateful for Sean Cannell and Heather Torres because Heather be my go-to Heather's one of my mentors. In addition to Ray Edwards, when I'm having issues, problems in my business, those, those are my go-to. And like the, <laughs> the main thing I had to talk to, I said, Heather, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. Like I'm, I'm about to lose it. Cause I could, I could just do it myself. N nope. Bring it down. Let's refine some things. And so in doing that and developing systems and such, which we'll get into a little bit later, you're sitting there and you're like, I could just do it myself. That problem comes with being cheap. By the time you get through paying this person to keep figuring it out. And honestly, at that point, you're spoon feeding them to figure it out. You've paid exactly, if not more than had you hired the person that was qualified to do what you needed them to do, but you just didn't want to pay that price. Now in the process, when I'm working with somebody, uh, I'm gonna be very upfront. We have the course, the building a team course, which we're going to be talking about this and next week I was going to end promotion today, but I honestly just did not get around to promoting it at all. So we're going to do it next week. So if you want to get in, the launch price will be good until next week. And then the doors will close on that price and it will jump a hundred dollars. So if you want to get that launch price for the building, of course, team, matter of fact, let me put that on the screen real quick. You can do the QR code, screenshot that, or you can just go to buildingateam.live. Either way, it will bring you up to what you need. Let me get that down for you so it's not in the way. So you go to buildingateam.live if you want to get access uh, to the course, or you can use the QR code or what have you. But that's going to be through now through next week. Doors will probably close on Thursday. We're already doing a live stream today. So if you got in, those of you already in the video simplified community, those that were part of like the beta testing, we were moving over to the platform. Uh, we're in Mighty Networks. And so, which is honestly very nice, <laughs> very well organized. So you all already have access. You should have had an email a few days ago, I think by Monday, giving you access. But here's the thing though. Like I said, when you buy too cheaply, you buy the problems that come with being cheap. Now, thankfully, I've not had to have that problem. My thing though was, and let me know if, who, who else is out there in the control freak section, because it's like, you already know what it takes to do what's in your mind and to bring it to life. I don't care if it's a thumbnail. I don't care if it's a video. I don't care if it's like drafting a document or crafting your website. It doesn't matter what the role is when you're looking to offset that there's a, a trust factor there. There's time and there's money, but when you improperly place the money side of things ahead of what you actually need, it's not worth it. And honestly, you'll burn yourself out really early and not want to work with anybody. I was super grateful to be educated on this. Like I said, like right after I had a uh, surgery and so it's like 2015, 2016. So right after I had surgery, I'm going through the course, I'm going through, you know, content and stuff like that. And it was through Shalene Johnson that said, if you are working or if you're doing full time, there are some things you don't have time to do. 
And because you're a control freak, I just, I'm a perfectionist, I, which doesn't exist. Let's all stop lying collectively. We're adults now. Let's stop lying. There's no such thing as perfection. However, you do have your brand vibe, your brand essence, and the quality of your brand, which can be maintained. And you can get things as close to right, if not excellent, for you to be able to produce it. Now, you're trying to find somebody that's going to replace you. But when you don't spend enough money to get somebody with the quality level of maybe the creativity of what you're trying to do, they don't have the skill sets. If you're not willing to go through the process of training them, don't hire them. You're going to waste their time and you're going to waste your time. And honestly, you waste a whole lot of time if you don't have the proper systems in, in place when you're going through the hiring process, because you still got to onboard that person. You still have to train them on your brand voice guide. Like you need to have something in place to explain that. How do you communicate when it's written or thumbnails? What's the vibe? What's the aesthetic? What's the tonality? When it comes to your video content, if you're hiring a video editor, what should it be? If you can't answer those things, it's hard to translate that or hand off a task because they're just playing the guessing game. The second thing, which leads us into point number two, create an email system. Well, oh, not, not that one. That's not what I meant. But setting unclear expectations, that's what it should have said. Matter of fact, with the magic of Ecamm, I can change that in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Oh, I know what I did, I changed it. Now, number two. Aha, Ecamm for the win. Let's bring that on down. Setting unclear expectations. Boom. I love Ecamm just for that reason alone. <laughs> Setting unclear expectations. You cannot expect people to read your mind. I don't care how much they, they watch your videos. And it's honestly a great thing if you can source from your community, like you hire somebody that's been following your journey for a while or that watches your content or enjoys what you're doing, enjoys the niche you're in or whatever. That's cool they still won't know exactly how you want things done or how to take things from the idea, the notes that you have and translate that to the finished and produced product. And again, I don't care if that's a PDF, if that's your slides that you may have a virtual assistant prepare for you for like if you're doing talks or presentations, drafting emails, writing blog posts, whatever. If they don't understand the, what they're supposed to do or how to go from here to there, they, they always are going to fail. And literally that is your fault as the entrepreneur. Or if you don't have a business, that's fine. I don't care if you're a creator, you're pretty much an entrepreneur, whether you believe it or not. And the point of hiring somebody is so that you can get all of these hats off of your head and refocus on the income producing activities. Those things that actually lead to income. Shameless plug. Go to buildingateam.live to get the course. Yeah. <laughs> but the things that actually require time, like you still got to do research on your videos. You still, maybe if you have a product, let's say your business has a physical product, you still have research development stuff that you want to do, or you're handling customer concerns. Maybe you're dealing with support tickets, depending on the scale of what you're doing. Cause you can set up like a support system, but if it's you doing everything, it's not going to work. Now, what I will encourage you to do, depending on the level of trust in the role that you're hiring for, if we're setting clear expectations, what's our baseline requirements? Do you even have this written down someplace? Most people like to just talk and communicate and assume that because I said it means that they heard it. It doesn't work that way. I don't know if you've ever sat in any room, conference, church or something, and you play whatever the name of the game is where they say like the blue fox ran down the street. And by the time you get 30 people away is Bob ran out of water going to the gas station. It is like what? So just because you said something doesn't mean that they heard you or that they understand. So if you don't have the clear expectations written down of the baseline requirements, how are they supposed to know what to do? How can they ever be done with their work? And you say, this is taking too long. It'd take me 10 or 15 minutes. I can't remember exactly who said it. Um, I was listening to a podcast, but they were saying like, if 
for what you need to get done, if you can at least get it 80% there, because it was like a, a vlogger's channel, it's like major creator on YouTube, like over a million subscribers. It's like, if they can get 80% of what you're doing done, let them do it. Because that last 20% is refinement. And I found that to be true. So even when you yourself are applying for a job or something like that, yeah, you got the baseline skills, you're familiar with the programs, even no different when I went from one bank to the next. You still have to figure out how that bank functions. And as a creator, most of the time you just are doing stuff. Just out there doing stuff. <laughs> like you know you got to get it done, but there is no system, no approach to what you're doing because you don't have clear expectations, which leads us into point number three. You have no systems in place. Niente. Niente. No systems. I don't know what the rest would be in Spanish, but India, if you out there, help a sister out in the chat. If you speak a little Espanol, but no systems in place. When you have systems, like the whole acronym, save yourself time, energy, and money. But it needs to be a silent F in the word system in the acronym because it's frustrating. If you don't have a system, it's a frustration. Put an F in there. Make it silent. This is American language. We can do it. <laughs> we butcher everything else up. But if you don't have any systems in place, then you really have to consider how are they supposed to work? If somebody said, we're going to give you a grant for $5,000 for you to be able to pay for X amount of months or whatever it would cost um, for you to hire somebody full time for you to get help. If that was like a grant, a creator grant, and somebody gave you 5K, you would blow through it just from that person trying to figure out what to do and play the guessing game of how do I actually edit a video? If you say, here's the files, here's some other mistakes. I like this person's video on YouTube. I like this person's video on YouTube. And I like this person's video on YouTube. Make it look like that. Do you know how to record content in the style that that person does? Or for a seven minute video, are we recording for 45 minutes and it's full of trash? Do you know how to properly record your content and log so that that person can color grade? Do they even know how to color grade those specific log files? What about your audio quality? What about the plugins? There is a whole bunch of different layers and moving parts that don't get seen for what you see on YouTube. So to improperly set poor expectations for somebody to take what they're looking at online, somehow dissect it, reverse engineer it, and try to make magic out of a mess doesn't really set that person up for success. So quick recap here. Mistake number one, hiring the cheapest person. And we're going to dive into the questions in just a second on the, in the chat. Number two, setting unclear expectations. And number three, you have no systems in place. Nothing for them to start with, nothing for them to understand your brand voice, what is acceptable, what's not acceptable, what's the baseline requirements and the standard of work before something gets shown back to you as saying that it's done. We, do we know what the brand colors are? What's the brand font? When do we use the 46 point font over the 26 point font? Or when we go to a certain platform to work with a compression, do we increase the contrast and saturation an extra 10 or 15% or like, this is stuff that you do by yourself that you just instinctively do. Cause you're used to doing it. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a virtual assistant role or if it's a video editing role, because when you're doing this stuff, you just instinctively do it. You're, you had that muscle memory worked in. You also know, like, you'll try it. Like today when I was doing the thumbnail, I'm like, I don't want to, I want to take that yellow bit out of there for some of these platforms. I want to take the yellow bit out of there. I'm going to replace it with black. What goes into the thought process to make the switch or to make the decision to say yay or nay? When you don't have any systems in place, you don't allow this person to come in and say, okay, now I have the step-by-step -step of what to do. So when the little bit, hopefully less than 20% is there when it comes to the refinement 
And it's something that I do, which I'll share with you all now. It's like if something is off, I won't ask somebody to say, uh, I won't ask them to like tell me, like, why is this wrong? Ask the question and lead in with, share with me why you did this versus I'm thinking I would probably just like, oh, I would have, uh, I put this in here because of whatever. And it's like, ah, okay. So here's the difference. The way I approach this is fill in the blank, right? Let's get into some questions, comments, and the like. Uh, what's up, DJ Strick? Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Island Kitchen, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Pony, or Big Pontiac, <laughs> good to see you. Glad you're here. Corey Sanders, what is up? Saying, I just bought the Sigma 16. Congratulations on that new purchase. Uh, saying, Tall Boy, just checking in. <laughs> uh, saying, here we go, systems. Systems. I'm telling you, systems. For real. Saying, who wants to pay the price? Pay the cost to be the boss. <laughs> Gordon Reed, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Um, all right, Corey Sanders saying, just burnt out, can't find someone who is reliable and affordable. There's something to be said, and I know I'm going to butcher this quote, um, or however the saying goes, but it's like you can have cheap, you can have fast, and then you can have something else, which is to the effect of like excellent quality work, essentially. And it's just, you can only have two of them. Again, sometimes the price is the problem. If when you're hiring, sometimes the price is the problem. And it can be similar to how when I'm working and I'm helping to educate different people when it comes to the camera space, what's cheap in real life is not cheap in the camera space. A five, six, seven hundred dollar camera in the camera space is cheap. It's budget friendly. It's low cost. Whereas in any other everyday standards or something like that, like take that same amount to like Best Buy or something and go get, I don't know, some kind of a TV or whatever. It, you know what I'm saying? Like that's quite a bit of money or look at what some people pay for their mortgage or for their car note. It's a significant amount of money. It's not the same in the video space. So depending on the role and the what you need help with and what the expectations are for the work that you're expecting your, your people to do, you know, we got to ask ourselves, am I setting too low of a price margin for me to actually find what I truly need? Because if what you truly need is a at a higher cost, then we either have to accept the loss because we're not willing to pay more than that or pay more to get exactly what you need. Either way, there's a cost that's going to be spent. You're either going to spend your money and pay for somebody to keep doing it over and over and keep you know, with the faulty showing up, not showing up, whatever, or you have where you pay and that person commands a certain price point because they know underneath that amount is a bunch of babbage. So that's the thing. And then also I would say like, when you're hiring somebody, do a 30 day trial with everyone that I'm working with. It's a 30 day trial to see if it's a good fit. On paper, it looked great. In the interview, sounded great. Enough to the point that compared to your peers, it was worth me giving you a shot. I still have other candidates that I have on the back end because sometimes there's a position for a second role in that, depending on what the need is and just where things are at. And so I leave the door of communication open that if that position becomes available, or if I'm doing another round of hiring or whatever, would you be interested in getting like a call back? Everybody says, yeah. So you have people at the ready. So when you're, you're going through the process, you're hiring somebody, go through it like a 30 day process. If it's not a great fit, they don't fit the culture of the company. They got to go. Or if they can't execute, like again, on paper, it looked good. They fooled you in person somehow. And it just is not a great fit. They go, you know what I'm saying? It's like being late on the first day. Do you want to work here? <laughs> you know, like, you know, I think some of us always kind of had some issue with that, like a 15, 16, 17 year old working. But again, if you're a kid, you don't know any better. So you, you, when you buy too cheaply, you buy the problems that come with being cheap. So if you're saying like, this is the best that I can do. Also, sometimes it may not be working with individuals. 
see if you can work with some of these companies out there. You got like Video uh, Husky, uh, a couple other ones that are doing it. Like they've raised their prices since the last time I've looked, but just something to consider. Uh, but I understand being burnt, but if you want to share more in the comments, we can dive into that. What's up, Fulgens Henry? So, uh, Fulgens Henry, what did I say? Hendry's. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. Said, then you have to deal with turnover, rehiring the right candidate, and plenty of time lost. That's when we get the get it done right slash get it done yourself mentality. A thousand percent. Because once you see that somebody's kind of not working out, everybody starts with like a high expectation of, I want this to work. I've hired video editors where from what I see looks good. It's a great vibe. It seems like this person will be easy to fit into the culture of the company. And then something happens, especially like working remote and stuff now. Clear communication solves everything. If you got to pull teeth with somebody for first off, it's a like I'm a pretty plain Jane black and white kind of a person. So if there are any problems, like you're going to know, like you're not going to have to guess am I frustrated or mad. Like it's like, hey, we're going to have conversations consistently without attitude and all the rest. But if there is something that's going on, I need to know ASAP. I'm not going to I'm not going to play the guessing game. We all grow. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, especially when you're in the employer role and you don't know the what to do's and the ins and outs, you give people second chances. But that's why, again, you have to have a system and a structure for how does this work? Essentially, in my company, we have a standard that like after three severe enough warnings to where it's kind of like a written warning. Like it's out. You know what I'm saying? Because after saying something the first time with stuff is consistently late and we're like three weeks behind, you said zero things to say why or what's going on. I've had to pick up the videos myself and re-edit them. And then you like all oh, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's that kind of a stuff, they go. They go. If they're not going to take what you're doing seriously, they don't fit. It's very easy. Thankfully, I've not had to have that issue. I've only actually fired one person, one video editor. And it's only been a couple other video editors that I have, like we will have two at different times. That is just like, again, poor, uh, poor communication, consistently poor communication. I'm not, I'm not going to play games around with that. And it's not about being harsh, but there is a standard. When they first sign on, there's a system. We have a contractor's agreement. There's like, it's a whole system in place, which is why I said not having one is why money gets spent. They don't have clear expectations of saying like, if you start here, clear communication, something happens, just let me know. So I know where stuff is. Things sometimes can be rearranged. But if you just say, oh, cool, you know, just let me know. You can't, you wanna be friendly, you wanna be close, but at least establish what the boundaries are. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what are the boundaries to the work that they're doing? Is this acceptable, not acceptable? They need to know where the lines are so they know when or not to cross them, what's acceptable and what's not. You can't think of yourself as an individual when you're hiring. You have to think of yourself as a brand because that's what you are. You're not an individual. You're not just somebody making YouTube videos. You are a brand. And if the brand has no rules and no structure, when you're hiring somebody, they are going to railroad you or consistently keep asking you questions, waiting for you to give them a system. Clear communication is always going to be the path to excellence and making sure that you have a system in place an onboarding process when you're hiring somebody is honestly the only way to hire as a creator, at least in my opinion. Again, which is why I say I highly recommend the building a team course, everything, literally everything, the swipe files alone, I can sell those on the website with no course with it. Cause that is the system. I literally took all the stuff minus the mistakes, minus the money wasted, minus the years invested in any stuff. You know what I'm saying? Short to the point. It's not exhaustive. <laughs> you can get through it. And like I said, after next week, when we will send the emails, dates and stuff like that, you'll see it on the community tab. And we'll put it in the description after the um, live stream as well. The price is going to go up by an additional $100. So if you want to grab it, I highly recommend that you do. By the way, you also get access to the Video Simplified Playbook, 
which is the replay of live streams, videos, and stuff like that we do in the community, as well as the private podcast that we do, which we have extra episodes. I think I've probably done like 10 episodes for sure, just on other things that's not included in the course stuff that comes up, questions that we've got in the community, stuff like that. Um, Corey's saying, I'm not a control freak, um, but I know what I won't accept. That, my friend, is what you call having a standard. <laughs> that's what you call a standard. Carlos saying that's all about infrastructure, 100%. What's up, Creativity Reigns? Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Saying, clicking the link in the description. Uh, saying, telephone is the name of the game. I'm sure what you mean by that. <laughs> I said, that was Italian. I ain't speak no Italian. I don't even know Italian. Or was it, you know what? Here's the languages that I speak when I said they're early. English and bad English. That's the best I can do for you. English and bad English. <laughs> Got a question coming in here. Uh, saying, is the iPhone 13 to 14 Pro video camera better than the Sony ZV-E10? The thing with, like when you, like, I know it's like different questions here, so we're going to switch to this topic, this question. Uh, the thing with that is two totally different kinds of things. If you just open up the basic camera app, put the kit lens on the ZV-E10 or whatever and, and hold it out, but you put it on like the bokeh mode or whatever, you might, oh, the iPhone look better or the contrast looks better. Cameras are tweaked until you get it the way you want. Like you define what the look is. Yeah, you can have like the standard picture profile. Yes, you can use the kit lens. But in some respects, a actual camera with better lenses and the quality of the glass, like something like the Sigma 16, not the kit lens kind of things, or like my Sony 35 millimeter F1.8 lens that I'm using right now, stuff like that makes the difference. So like if you're talking about transitioning from like a phone or maybe buying a phone or a thing, like it's two totally different like schools of thought. Get what you want. That's what I say. Because it won't matter if it's better. If at the end of the day, you're like, man, I'm tired of using my phone. I want extra range. At some point, the phones cap out because you can only do this pinching to zoom and even though it's switching from multiple lenses, you can only do that so many times. There is a clear difference. Are phones exceptionally good? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you make exceptionally great looking videos with your with the iPhone 13 and 14 Pro or even just the regular ones? Absolutely. I just think in my opinion, in some respects, it takes a little bit more to get the phone to mimic what the camera can do, but it's really, really excellent. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's just more or less you have to decide within yourself what you actually want. Because if you, if I say the ZV-10 is better, oh, you're going to be able to get more range. What if you put better lenses on it, blah, 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 blah. And you say, okay, cool, but you really don't like this. You really don't like this. It won't matter. Because you can be like, man, I just want to use my phone. And that's what you'll resort to doing. <laughs> you know, so something to consider. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull this up really quickly. Get to another question. If you have questions, we're going to be wrapping this up pretty, pretty soon. Uh, let's see here. JFK Productions. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Somebody screaming Diana. Facebook user 29394970. <laughs> it shows up. Uh, you got to click on the thing to let me know the who who's who in the, in the chat when it comes to Facebook. We're doing the multi-streaming and Ecamm, and so, which has been honestly really great. The only problem, Twitter, been playing games a little bit. I don't know why to say that. All right, cool. All righty. So, sorry, I was updating it, saying airport. Atheist saying, thank you, you're very welcome. But yeah, it's, when it comes to phones versus cameras, phones are convenient because you always have them. They're getting better and better and better. And you can make fantastic looking videos with the cameras that already exist, provided you have good lighting, provided you have good audio. Nobody's going to say, man, it could look better. Man, this, <laughs> this video looks, looks like trash. Why don't, why don't you get a camera? Zero people are going to complain with what you create with. It's just more or less accepting, I want a camera or I want to use my phone. For me, I wanted a dedicated camera because I hate using a phone because I want to use it for everything else. Especially if I'm traveling or whatever, I take my car mount with me so I can use GPS and stuff like that. And if I'm documenting, 
like that experience or me getting to do a talk or whatever, I need a camera. I don't want another phone. So it's just my personal preference. I don't care how good the cameras get. It's just my personal preference. So for you, if you're deciding between the two, the quality is negligible. If you don't really like cameras, if you don't really want to buy more lenses, if you don't want to deal with SD cards, you know what I'm saying? Like it's benefits, pros and cons to both. And I don't think honestly it's logical to compare the two. <laughs> Saying the link, oh, RK3, what's going on? So the link isn't there for me to click. Refresh. I don't know what it is on uh, Facebook. I don't know if I can even change it. I don't think I can at this point. But this is the link uh, if you want to go there. It's the building a team dot live. Or you can hold your phone up to the screen right now or take a screenshot or whatever. And the QR code will take you to building a team dot live. So you can get access not only to the course, it'll walk you through. And it's set up to make sure you actually go through it, but it's not full of fluff. And you get the video simplified playbook, which is the replay of any live videos that we do in the community. In addition to our private podcast, which is the Entree Chats Daily Morning Show. Matter of fact, let me show you all some of the episodes that we've uh, been able to do on there. It's really dope. And to be honest with you, Mighty Networks, which we are hosting and launching the community with the membership community, it's freaking fantastic. So if anybody's looking for like a membership community, Mighty Networks is the jam. Uh, let's go to the communities. All right. Um, yep. Building a team dot live. Thank you for whomever put that in the chat. Um, all right. Let me pull this up for one quick Sekion. But the private podcast, we took the Entree Chats Daily Morning Show that I started, I think, in 2019, rebranded that specifically for the membership podcast. And that's what we use in the community so that we can get access. Let's go here. Yeah. So this is the Entree Chats Daily Morning Show, every day, 6 30 a.m. Most of the time, <laughs> it's just six or sometime. It's an afternoon show, <laughs> but you know, again, what I secretly look for when hiring a virtual assistant, that is the episode that came out today, episode 40. So it's quite a bit of content in there. How do you train a video editor to pull great mic micro content for your pillar, your pillar stuff. It's like, if you're doing like today, a live stream and you want to make somebody learn how to do that, guess what you need? A system. <laughs> you need a system, but went through that. And these are questions that come out of the community. What do I ask during interviews when hiring a video editor, which you already get in the course, like the 17 best questions for hiring a video editor and 17 best questions, at least that I found when hiring a virtual assistant. And there's other things that I do in there just to make sure that you get what you need to get out of it. So <laughs> that's that. Uh, let's see here. All right, cool. All right, that's all that I'm going to go through for today. Not going to belabor the point, but for real, if you need assistance, ask in the comments, ask in the chat. I'm very active on YouTube. We're streaming this to a couple different platforms as well. So if you have questions, put them in the comment section or before we wrap this up, you can put it in the chat. But if you're watching this on the replay, I appreciate your time and your attention and for being here. And if you have questions or if you're legit stuck, say so. There is one question I did want to address that came in. I'm going to pull this up on my phone because it's faster, which came from Monday, uh, Tuesday's last live stream. So on Tuesday, we covered the first steps when you're going through hiring a video editor. Today, it's just three overall mistakes. And a question came in from Holly and she said, it's been a while. She's struggling with having great edi video editors in which they lack the quality after a few months. So the thing is to answer this question, how do you make sure when you hire a video editor that they don't get lazy on you? Essentially. The thing is, if you're just saying, let me see what you got and you hand them a video file, there's no expectations and no boundaries of what you're using and what you're doing or that it's going to work. 
You know what I'm saying? Like there's no expectations. So again, it goes back to setting clear expectations when you're working with someone. Is there a certain level that the audio needs to be at? Are you doing anything specific to your audio? Are you color grading your videos a certain way? If you make a mistake in the video, what's the expectation of what should happen should fill in the blank? Should you fill in the blank? What's the expectation of at the beginning of the video? What should be done? You know what I'm saying? Like there are certain things. And that's when like when you're going through looking at other people's work, you say, is this raw talent and maybe that client that they worked with? Because that is a factor. The client that that person worked with wasn't that great. They just said, just do anything and that'll be great. So you can't really judge on that, which is why it's good to ask certain qualifying questions of asking, like, here's a great interview question. Like if you're going through that or you want to get started hiring and all of that, what did your previous employer have you to do on their videos? Get specific. Cause everybody can say, Oh, I added a lower third end screen title screen bumper. We added some music and, um, uh, you know, stuff like that. And then you're like, okay, everybody can say that ask more quality questions in your interviews. It makes the difference when you're hiring somebody that's supposed to do something with what you know. And if pro tip here, if you don't know anything about that craft, you probably have creator and entrepreneur friends that do. I did freelance video editing. It's all kinds of questions that unless you're in the trenches, you wouldn't know how to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you're doing this, you don't understand when I say log, you can be like, like captain's log, a star Trek. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> they won't understand. Or you say, well, what's the gamma and the knee and the, for all this Sony stuff. And you're like, what? I ain't never seen that or heard of that before. You know, it's certain things based on the work that you're doing or even programs. If it's a program that maybe you use all the time and this person is saying that they're good at that, ask them quality questions. That should be something that you know if you have done this work. It works on both ends. If you're wanting to work for, work with a, a creator or something, because I, I know it's some of you all that have said, like you're wanting to get into freelance work, you ask quality questions to the employer too. It'll be an impression that is a good impression on them and make them sometimes put a little asterisk next to your name as somebody that they would consider hiring. So just some thoughts there as we wrap up today's show. Hope you all got a lot of value out of it. And if you're watching this again on the replay, thanks for being here. Those of you that are live, thanks for being here. I enjoyed you all as always, but it's like, like I love to end all of my live streams, podcasts, mostly the podcasts. The winds of life blows on us all, but it's how you set your sails. If you want to get access to the course, you can go to buildingateam.live. The launch will only be available now through next week, and that will be going away. So if you haven't got access to this the video, simplified playbook and the community and the private podcast bonuses, that's going to go away very, very shortly. That guy's a little passion. I'll see you on the next video here on the channel. Peace.